Okay, I know y'all probably have seen vacuum forming before, but I'm going to go over what my, my little uh, setup here is. Anyway, I bought this vacuum forming machine from a, a guy at a swap shop, and I, I, I reworked it. Uh, uh, here's the heating element. I had a big uh, grill here to keep stuff from hitting it, but I found out my, I needed to let my, uh, my ABS um, get a little bit warmer and sink a little bit deeper than the uh, grid itself, so I removed that. Um, I also, he had this set up where this was a uh, piece of mesh. There, there was a piece of aluminum and then a piece of wire and then another piece on top. And I just couldn't, put, and he had it done going with the shop back and just couldn't pull the suction needed. So I totally reworked it. I sealed, I pulled the top off, sealed it all up. This is a um, uh, 18 by 12 baking sheet that I took and I drilled all the holes in it. Uh, I couldn't even tell you how many is on there, but I tried to make them kind of uniform, and um, it, it works really well. Anyway, there's my, my table. Um, what happens here is this is a clamshell. You heat it, you pull this over, and you can see this is an exact fit on the outside of um, the pulling surface. Anyway, my vacuum is formed. I'll start down here at the air compressor. Uh, I'd use a standard air compressor. I pulled the uh, filter, intake filter off. I just happened to quadra 65 muffler fit. I was able to seal it all the way around. I just used goop, sealed this, sealed one pipe, and then came off with um, standard PVC. All this is just gooped using goop like you buy at Home Depot uh, to, to connect here, but this is all standard PVC glue. It comes around comes down to a check valve, a standard plumbing check valve, a plumbing fitting here, here, it goes in the middle, it allows me to suck air in, but nothing goes back the other way. Um, this uh, um, vacuum former came with a uh, gauge that was here, I pulled it out, put it on my table. Uh, a shop vac can pull uh, five, um, well I don't know how, uh, pounds of vacuum or whatever, I'm not sure how they figured it, but I can pull up almost to 20 with this. I can pull so hard that I pull plastic down into the holes here. Anyway, um, as I come across here, that gives me my gauge for my vacuum. It comes down. It goes down and here are two three inch in diameter PVC pipes and those are eight foot long. I pull vacuum into those. I'm actually planning on adding a third pipe so I can get a longer pull. It, I, it won't be stronger, but it'll just give me a longer duration of the pull. Anyway, I come back up and come in here. I have a, uh, a plumbing. Uh, you can see here where I can pull this off. I didn't want it glued permanently. I want to be able to remove this, remove this from my table if I needed to work on it. Anyway, I come up. I have a valve. It's just a regular cutoff valve. It, it's kind of tight, but it works well. Once you lock it up and turn the vacuum on, it'll, it'll really pull the vacuum to it. And when I pull the ABS over, all I do is turn the switch and my vacuum, it, it, it pulls the vacuum. Anyway, uh, I have a switch here that turns on my oven and lets it heat up to the, the uh, whatever I feel looks right. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up a uh, pull. I have a new uh, plug for um, the Halifax. This is the rear um, nacelle. I'm gonna get ready to pull. T I got to pull two of those, so I'm gonna get it all ready and I'll go over the um, actual pulling of the part. Okay, here I am uh, preparing the AB. Put the ABS on. Uh, when I got this. Um, machine it was just square angle it was uh, just angle um, iron you see here what I did was so I could hold my ABS on I went ahead and I just added balsa square here that gives me a good uh, place to clamp onto anyway I use a standard um, a place I order from I get 18 and a half 18 by 11 sheets um, that's this is 060 because I'm actually pulling a really deep uh, draw on this so I want to be able to go all the way around it without getting too thin Anyway, I just lay this on, it fits that area, and then I go back and I take uh, paper clips, the big, the big heavy duty paper clips you get from like Office Max, and I just clamp this all the way around. 
and I just keep going till I'm um, all the way around the whole thing. I use four down the side, three across the back, and four down the other side. I'll get this all set up and I'll be back. Okay, here we are. It, uh, I've got the got to step over. I got the ABS uh, anchored down with the the paper clips. I turn the oven on. It takes two to three minutes to get this hot enough. And to uh, since it's got so much open area on the sides, I take a piece of plywood and I cover it. And I also take a blanket and I cover it and cover the sides. It kind of keeps the heat in and allows it to. Uh, get good and hot and I can keep an eye on it by looking in the end here and I want a good droop I'll show that to you in a minute anyway uh, the next thing is I have my mold sitting here in the middle now this is a really deep mold most of mine are a little, little bit shallower than this but anyway I like I showed you in the picture I use a, um, a dry lubricant well, I use it called uh, it's just Johnson's baby powder I put it on the mold and I rub it in and what this does it kind of helps it uh, release and not um, I grab so hard to the uh, grab so hard to the to this mold itself because it, it will. It, I mean, it's, I have a bear of a time getting them off sometimes, especially this deep when I have to end up cutting the end of this thing to get them off. So anyway, I've got that prepared. It's all sanded out. Now it's just time, just a matter of waiting to get the um, the plastic heated. And you see here, it's got a wrinkle to it. It'll continue on, it's still pretty hard. And you can burn yourself pretty easy on this if you touch it. So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and let that uh, heat up. I will uh, cut this tape off so we don't spend all our time waiting and then I'll come back and show it to you right before I get ready to pull. Okay, it's been a couple minutes and uh, it's still um, sinking down. I'll show it to you in a second. What I'm going to get ready to do is it goes pretty quick now. Once this droops down, I'm going to turn the vacuum on. It might get pretty loud. And then um, it'll all be one quick motion when I get ready to go. All right. You can see here how low that, that has sunk. I mean, it's, it's way down in there. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn the vacuum on. It'll get loud. Oh, my goodness. Hang on. Got to make sure I'm plugged in. vacuum come unplugged. Anyway, I'm up, going up to 15 real quick. You ready to do this all in one quick motion? I got this. We'll go over. And we go slow and then pull the full vacuum on it. And it pulls it down. And we let the vacuum run totally out on it so it keeps the part so it keeps the part nice and pulled down until it cools enough to keep the shape. So I'll let that cool off. You can see here I got pulls in the corner, which is okay because we're going to cut these corners off anyway. Have a real small one back here in this corner, but we can shave it off. Now all we do is pop, pull all our pins off. That's still pretty hot. And I'll usually let this cool a little while, but this this will pull out. There's my mold. Now the hard part is getting this out. I, I have I, since this is the first time I pulled this, I'll have to drill a hole here, here, and um, I'll put a couple of these eye hooks in it, and then help me pull out. And you got to be careful because what you'll do is you'll you'll actually pull the crease out, or or pull a hole in this. So I'm gonna let this set a little while and cool, and then then I will pull it out. But that made a nice clean. Um, part. Uh, it, it, all we have to do is glass the inside of it and it will be ready to install.